welcome to the At Matters podcast presented by the Outer Loop Theater, Theater Experience, where we create art that matters. I'm Michael Herman, the founder of the Outer Loop and one of the directors of the Humanity Project. Um, and on this podcast, we, on the At Matters podcast, we explore the question, what are we here to do through the lens of art and social change? So again, I'm Michael Herman. Who are um, you? Samuel Damila. Yeah. The uh, Director of Operation in Tanzania for the Outer Loop Theater. And also, what um, else do you and do? And also Humanity. And also I'm a Director of uh, Supreme Tanzania Safari. Ah, cool. Yeah. We'll get more into that in a minute. Okay. Um, so before we get into the conversation, we always like to start each podcast episode uh, with a little game that we call Five Things. And I know you know because we've played before, but for our listeners and viewers, I'm just going to throw out a question uh, and you have to tell me five things that you think about that category and then you can do the same for me. Okay, cool. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. So my category of five things, ready? Tell me five things that all the Mzungus do on safari. Uh, first, they ask for animals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Secondly, what should we wear on safari? Mm -hmm. Third, uh, what time are we departing? <laughs> yep. Fourth, Are we going to have lunch? <laughs> of course. And the last Fifth, one? The last one. Uh, what time can we go back to the lodge? Yeah, cool, cool. My category is five things uh, we normally do on planning before the group come with the managed project. I thought that was a secret. Um, so five things we do before the rest of the group comes that you and I do. Yes. That's a good one. Um, you and I, first we come out and we do in the village, we try to do a simulation of all the activities that we're going to do when the group comes. Okay. The second thing is we have lunch at the lion place, the pride place, <laughs> the lion pride restaurant. Three, we go and we um, we see the guy who's the friend in the ferry office to get the ferry tickets, VIP. Fourth, we um, oh man, we look at the itinerary for the four hundredth time and make more changes than we already made. And fifth, we what else do we do? Oh. We drive in the car a lot in traffic for many, many hours. Yeah. Cool. That was a good <laughs> Yeah. Cool. Um, cool. So that's a good segue. Your category was really good for uh, for the what we're going to talk about. So as you know, we've been talking a lot in all of the Outer Loop work about what is our purpose? Why are we here, right? As human beings, the Outer Loop, we often talk about why are we here as artists, right? Then we worked with the Msona group. What, what's our purpose, okay. you know? So that's what we want to talk about today, okay. you know, for you. Like what I did one, Rachel did one, Melissa did one. We all talked about what our purpose is, Jackson. Okay. So we want to talk a little bit about, you know, what you see your purpose as, like what you're here to do. Cool. Okay. So we'll, but before we get to that, yeah. um, I think it would be really interesting and fun for everyone who is listening and watching yeah. to hear about like how we met like like how did we meet and how has our friendship developed over the years yeah okay yeah i remember <clears throat> actually me and you yeah we met uh, uh when i was working at daigo tours mm. at that time when you come with another company called mm. dramatic adventure mm. Is when we meet, and uh, after that, when you go back to US, 
you come up with some ideas mm. of helping. Um, there was one family named Loka. They have some interesting story. And then when you so say you are coming back, you come back while I was still working at Daigo. Mm. But at that time, we were having some up and down, up and down. And then uh, from there, we started uh, friendship, mm. a solid friendship. Yeah. And then I decided to quit Daigo. And then we go together. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So when we first met when you were work when you were working for Daigle and I came with DAT, the family you're talking about and helping in the village. So um Mama Joyce, right? Asha and Patrick and Joyce. Um when I first went to that meeting with the village and I and Asha stood up and talked about the need for the maternity clinic, right? When I came back to the camp and I asked someone, I was like asking everyone, how, how do I find that person? I don't even know who she is, her name, anything. Who, who was the person who went and found her? Me. Yeah. I'm the one who went and found her. Right? Yeah. Like, so the, I don't, I still to this day don't know how you found her. Like I, right now, if you asked me, don't you know how I found her? I would say, I have no idea. So like, how did you find her? Uh, well, actually, I tried to ask uh, one member from the meeting, mm. and then they say the woman is living somewhere within the, this village, so mm. in the middle, and then uh, there was a little kid took me up to that place, and then uh, once I saw the place, and then I come back and, and tell you that I know the place where they're living. So then... She, you did you go get her and bring her to meet with me or like how did that work no it, it's just uh i just take you up to the house of the woman mm -hmm. and then uh, we meet there and then start talking so it's fair to say that the beginning the, the entire beginning of the humanity project which is which is asha's story is like the beginning you were there at the very beginning, because you're the one who found Asha and brought her and I together. Yes. So you, me, and Asha are connected in that way that the very beginning of all of our eight years of Humanity Project work is you, me, and Asha at the beginning. Yes. It's amazing. Um, so throughout the eight years of the Humanity Project, right, after you leave Daigle and you're out on your own, how do you feel like our relationship has changed over the years from like you and I like from when we first met to now how do you see that having changed oh, there is a big changes a lot of changes since that time till today uh, before that yeah my life was uh, I can say I didn't have I didn't see uh, my future ahead. Hmm. Yeah, before we met. Really? Yeah, yeah, it's true. Uh, but once we met, I see my future. That's why also uh, I just opted to quit Daigo, to be on my own, and then to be with you for the Humanity Project. Really? Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Because where I was working before, uh, well, once you want to jump from one stage to another, you say that maybe I can start doing this. And then there is some obstacle coming mm. from the owner of the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But when I say it's over and right now I can see my life is easier. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. That's amazing. I did not know that. So you have to know that. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. So, so since you left Daigle and started your own company and we've been working together, how has working with the Outer Loop and the Humanity Project kind of changed your work, your professional life and your personal life? Mm, working with uh, the Outer Loop and Humanity Project, uh, it changed a lot, uh, a lot of things in my life. Mm. 
Yeah, first of all, uh, before before joining the humanity, I didn't understand well about uh, the art. Mm. And I didn't understand well when you say helping people. Mm. Yeah. I will, all I know is it was just uh, helping people. It's just you can meet somebody on the way, just mm. give him like something like a bread only. Mm. But there is more mm. on that. Not only a bread. Mm. There is a way to help people. Mm. And in this world, I, I can say all I learn is nobody's perfect. Mm. So you can meet different people and uh, everyone has his own needs. So after being to the Outer Loop and Humanity Project, yeah, there is a lot, a lot of things I learned. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. There is a lot, especially in terms of art. Mm. I know art can, uh, now I know art can do anything. That's cool. Yeah, can do anything. Ah. Yeah. That's very cool. Especially helping people. I like it a lot. Mm. Yeah, I love it. That's cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, so a little bit more, uh, like I know a lot of this, this, your, uh, you know, where you're from and everything, but I don't think, I, I know a lot of people know who you are mm. from, cause we tell everyone, yeah. but to hear from you might be nice. Um, like where are you, where were you born? Where are you from? Maybe talk a little bit about your childhood, like growing up. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was born in Kilimanjaro, uh, near Alto Mount Kilimanjaro. Mm. You know, when I was still a little kid, I saw some uh, tourists uh, passing, going to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. And I love, I, like, I love the way they respect the nature. So in that way, in my mind, it come up with some uh, uh, thinking that uh, I think when I grew up, I have to be also uh, a guide. That's cool. Yeah, so that I can take tourists to the mountain. Uh. That's cool. And then once I finished up my school, my primary school, I went for the secondary. And then I went for the, uh, to the college mm. of tourism. Mm. And when I finished up, I started a job as a guide mm. for the mountain, Kilimanjaro. I've been to Kilimanjaro 20 times to the top. 20 times. You've yes. climbed to the top of yes. Kilimanjaro 20 Kilimanjaro times. 20 times. Yeah. And from there, I started working little by little as a guide. After some years is when I met you, mm -hmm. because I worked to different companies in Arusha, in Kigoma for the chips, and mm -hmm. also in, uh, uh, in Mwanza also. I work in Mwanza too. Mm -hmm. So after that, I just came to Dar es Salaam, working also to another company. In Dar es Salaam, actually, I worked for two companies. Mm. Uh, and then I end up to Daigo. Daigo, and then I just quit Daigo and then start my own company. Mm. And then I joined the Humanity Project. Oh, yeah. What did your, when you decided to go into tourism, yes. and go to college for tourism, how did your parents and your family feel about that? Is that something that was common where you're from or was it a, a new direction for someone to go in in the family well you know my father actually my family my father was a policeman mm. and my father wanted a lot me to be a policeman <laughs> but i said no 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 i don't want to be a policeman mm. uh, i need to find my own way and then i said uh, you know i see every day when i go to school I, a lot of tourist car passing, and I like that job. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can just try it. Yeah. Just give me a give me a go, and then I can just try it. Yeah. They say, okay, you can just uh, do whatever you want, but uh, you have to make sure that uh, what you are doing is the thing that you love. Hmm. Yeah. And mom, mother, mom is uh, was a businesswoman till today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mom, there is no obligation. Mom, mom say that ah, whatever you do, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, that's cool. So they were supportive. Yeah, they were supportive. That's cool. And you have how many brothers and sisters? I have only one brother and three sisters. And you are the oldest or the youngest? I'm the oldest. You're the oldest. Yeah. 
Ah, so and three the, sisters, three sisters, and the young. And what are what uh, areas of business or interests yes. are they in? Yeah, one my young brother actually. Yeah, he just went to where father passed through. He's mm -hmm. a policeman now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my so dad got he got one person. Yeah, to one person to do it, <laughs> and uh, my two sisters. One is working at uh, this. There is one NGO um, in Kahama. Mm -hmm. They are working with the environment. Also, she's working there. Yeah. One is a teacher in Dodoma, mm -hmm. and another one working as a procurement in Moshi. Oh, cool. There is a um, something like a medical company. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. She works there as a procurement officer. Nice. Yeah. And then what about? Uh, I, I obviously know your uh, your family yeah. really well, um, but I don't know that you know people listening or watching know. Could you talk a little bit about your wife and your kids and and who they are, how old, what they're doing? Yeah, well, um, I have a beautiful wife called Teopista. Mm -hmm. uh, how long are you married? Now it's uh, do we have a fourteen? 14, no, 13 years. 13 years. 13 years. Wow. Yeah. Cool. Where did you meet? We met at uh, in Dar es Salaam mm -hmm. when I was working. Also, she was working. Uh, actually, our office was very close nearby. <laughs> so that is how we met. And then, uh, yeah, we decided and opt to be together. And, uh, yeah, we have three kids. Three kids. Yeah, Donald. Uh, Ethan mm -hmm. and Charity. Don and how old is everyone? Donald. Donald is right now is thirteen, mm -hmm. nearly fourteen. Mm -hmm. uh, there is Ethan is eight, nearly to nine, mm -hmm. and there is Charity now is nearly to five. Yeah, already. Yeah. Oof. And I know there's also one other member of the family too. Uh, maybe a a four legged. Furry. No. Oh yeah, there is. We have one of four legs. That's <laughs> Poppy. We call it. That's Poppy. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. She's there. And how old? And now it's a one year and a half. A year and a half. Yeah, a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. And she guard. He guards the property. For you. Yes, he guards the property very well. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So like security. Yeah, security. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Um. So let's talk more about. The tourism business. Yes, yes. So you said growing up, what interested you about it was you see the tourists going and everyone's interested in nature and learning about all of that, right? That's what interested you yes. in it. So now that you've been working in it for many years now, yes. right? What do you love most about actually doing it every day? I love uh, because... The most I love is just meeting different people mm. from different worlds mm. so that they can learn their different perspectives. Mm. You know, when they come to Tanzania, yeah, we go on safari. I try to explain what, what we have in our country and also some of them, they tell me what they have in their country. So in that way, we can just exchange some Right. Some idea and learn more about the Western countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not for you. It's not just when people come and they want to go on safari and learn about the nature and the people and the animals and the land, but it's also you want to learn just as much from them. Yes. And how do you feel that people receive that? Do you feel generally that people are open to that kind of exchange? Yes, people are open to that kind of exchange. Yeah. They like it a lot. They do. Yeah. They don't feel like, oh, no, I'm just here to see things. They want to, no. they, they're interested in talking. You know, most of people, uh, there is some people that uh, when they come normally to on safari, they just concentrate on safari. Mm -hmm. But in order to make them speak, there is a way to talk to them. There is some stories about, uh, about the wildlife. There is some stories about... Uh, uh, about the environment, about uh, Tanzania, yeah, and uh, mostly uh, when when we meet, let's say, like uh, complicated clients. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember one time I had uh, 
a safari with a family. Mm. It was uh, dad and mom. And uh, they were having like a conflict mm. last night. Mm. So they didn't want to get along with. When you go on safari, mother said, go that way. <laughs> and dad say that way. So what I try to do is just, uh, I drive. And then when I find a good place where we can have like a, a toilet stop, mm. and then I just bring them together and then we talk. I said, you know, this is not the right time. You come on vacation mm. and you want to have a good experience. I know you have some uh, uh, ups and downs, but can you just wash them away a little mm. bit? so that we can concentrate on safari and then uh, mm. later, maybe you will sit down and talk about it. Mm. And how did that go? Yeah, it, it went well. Yeah. Yeah, they agree. And uh, after a few minutes, I just enter a story of uh, uh, a story of uh, lion and uh, zebra. Mm. It, it was all about, you know, lion and zebra, they cannot stay together. Mm. Why? Because lion is saying, ah, you are, you are good. To, you, you, you are favorite meat. Yeah? Mm. And uh, zebra said, uh, yeah, you are my friend, but uh, I can't come closer. You see? Yeah. So, yeah, story like that. And uh, nice. so there was one story. I remember that was the last story I tried to explain to them. And then uh, everyone was laughing. And after that, it was good. Everybody was fine. Yeah. Yeah, and then we sit together for dinner. Everything's was, fine. Yeah, it's fine. So it's almost like in that situation, like a therapist. Yes, it was like a therapist. <laughs> and when we finish up trip, they say, you know what? Mm. You did a good thing mm. in your life. Mm. We didn't expect that. Mm. Actually, the woman said, I was about actually to quit the following day, go mm. back to my country. Mm. Yeah. And because you did, you helped. Because you helped, yeah. That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of um, several trips, but especially last year, maybe. But it's happened several times, I think, where um, sometimes I think, as you know, I can be maybe um, not very patient or not very tolerant of certain people that, behave in certain ways um have you seen similar situations like that with me and the groups when we come like the husband and wife have you seen that happen similar situations with me and and people for you and people it was happening before but uh once once you know you have to be patient yeah so in those situations when when i would have maybe difficulties communicating with some of the people that were in the group how did you see your role there like do you do you recall last year what you did to try to get in there and try to smooth things out a little bit uh well as long as i know you michael uh in a certain circumstance that's happening like uh, you're not getting along with people mm. i normally get into it and uh, try to calm you down. Because I know I know it's tough to work with people, especially we people, we have a different, uh, uh, different idea, different uh, opinions mm -hmm. and different thinking. Mm -hmm. So I normally get into it and I try to calm you down. I you know patient is everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you feel like you've been successful at calming me down? Yes, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Why do you think that is? Why do you think um, when other people try to calm me down, it doesn't work? But you, when you get involved, why does everything calm down? Uh, everything calmed down because um, what I see since we started working together mm. and uh, there is a certain trust that you have for me. Mm. When I try to tell you something because of that trust, mm. you calm down. 
Yeah, that's the secret. Yeah, that's the secret. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we I talk Rachel and I talk about this all the time, and we tell people uh, that we work with that we trust you with our lives. Yeah, yeah. And I'm pretty sure you know that. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's cool, man. It's nice to hear. Um, so you started Supreme Tanzania Safaris how many years ago now? Uh, I started since uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it was 2019 mm -hmm. to 2020, at the end of 2019. Mm -hmm. But 2020 is when the COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So I can say it was nothing. And then uh, 2021, that's when we started. Yeah. So you start the company and you're ready to go and then COVID hits. Yes. So no tourism. No tourism. How did you get through that time? It was a tough year. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we tried, we tried to do some other things, but uh, it was just very slowly, like uh, trying to find maybe some hiring to mm -hmm. hiring of a car somewhere. But it was a little bit tough. It was a tough year. Yeah, tough year. And then I remember that time is when I sent you a lot of requests. Remember? Mm. Yeah. yeah. And thanks. You helped me a lot mm. at that time. Mm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And then, so 2021 comes around, COVID starts to go away. Yeah. And you, how does the business start to go? The business started at 2022. Mm. 2021, I can say no, because we had only. It was rough. Mm. One, two. Yeah. yeah. So 2022 is when things start yeah, to really started, become yeah, regular. Yeah. So it's 2024 right now. So the business is really, even though it started in 2020, really you've only had two years of like full running the business. Yes. How do you feel like it's going so far? Uh, I feel good yeah. right now, the way it goes, because mm -hmm. uh, um, up to now, I remember last week, if if not last week, maybe, yeah, it was last week. Mm -hmm. I told you about uh, the TripAdvisor certificate of uh, from TripAdvisor, travel, Traveler's Choice. Traveler's Choice, yeah. so the and company. The winner, yeah, the company, the winner of uh, the Traveler's Choice award. That's amazing. Yeah. So why, does, why do they award a company that award? They award that, a company that award because uh, uh, of the review that you are having. Mm -hmm. And also how you uh, reply to the reviews. Oh, it's also yeah. the reply. Yes, also the reply. Ah. They check a lot of things and then, uh, yeah, they give you. That's cool. Review, reward. That's cool. Yeah. So you feel good about how the business is going now? Right now, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I feel good. I yeah. feel good how the business goes. Cool. Yeah. Is there anything that you feel like in the next few years you're trying to achieve from where you are now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is a lot of things I need to achieve. Like, uh, actually, right now, I'm still looking for the partnership company, mm -hmm. uh, the tour company, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, from outside, so that can be getting some clients, a lot of clients to Tanzania. So, yeah. like, travel agents travel in, agents. like, the U.S., the U.K., around yes. the world that can help feed business yes. to you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. safari business. Yes, yeah, safari business. That's cool. Yeah. And you work all over Tanzania, not just yes, in one I region. I work all over Tanzania. Cool. Not only uh, Dar es Salaam, Ikumi, and Salu, no. So but all over Tanzania. So anyone who wants to come to Tanzania and see the land, the people, learn about anything, it doesn't matter what region they want to go to, you can take them some pre Yes, I can take them because the Tanzania is on my right hand. So if you wake me up in the night, I, I will say, I'll tell you, okay, let's go here. That's cool. Yeah. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. So as we come to the end of the conversation, I'll go back to the beginning, which yeah. was saying that we were talking always about purpose and yes. like, why are we here? Yeah. Right. So, you know, for me, as I know, Rachel's heard me say a lot, I know this is not your purpose, but for me, much of your purpose in my life has been like we talked about already like helping me become a better person, helping me become a more patient person, helping me become a better communicator, right? 
yes, of course, it's the working on the projects together and helping that. But for me, it's it's much bigger than that. How would you, how do you talk about, like, do you think about, like, what am I here to do? Like, yes, you're a tour operator, you're working on the humanity project, you're helping, you're doing all these things, but more as a human being on on this planet in Tanzania, yeah. like, how would you describe what you're here to do? Yeah. <clears throat> my purpose actually is, uh, uh, the way I'm doing my job, like a uh, tour, organizing some safaris, mm. meeting a lot of people, uh, and also doing some humanity work. Mm. My purpose is to see uh, everyone has a better experience mm. and everyone has a better, uh, uh, when it comes to the outer look, everyone has a better life. Mm. Yeah. Because I normally say, we human, we are all equal. Mm. So whatever um, our differences, but we we'll still be equal. Mm. Yeah. So my purpose is to uh, to have the uh, to give people what I have, the experience that I have. Mm. And also to see, also they are happy, and give them me, uh, give give me the experience that they are happy. Mm. Yeah. Is it fair to say could, when I hear you say that? Yeah. And I also put together some of the things that I said. We both said to each other before about the eight last eight years and working together and learning from each other. Is it fair to say? that you in so many ways are also helping people heal a little bit, helping people deal with the suffering of life? Yes. 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 You feel yes. that that's... I feel, yeah. I feel... What you're doing so. through... Yes. Because as I say that, I just tell you one example of those yeah. clients we are not uh, mm -hmm. get along with and mm -hmm. also... The way that I normally calm you down. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a, that's, yeah, it's a, a huge purpose, a huge thing you're doing, right? Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not to be taken lightly. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, you know this already, but, you know, I just, I want to thank you again for having this conversation, for everything you do, for, the Outer Loop, the Humanity Project, for me and Rachel personally, and for me personally. I mean, you know, we've talked about it a lot, but I believe not only am I alive still, it due in large part yeah. to you, but I'm also, the, the, the work we do is successful and becoming more successful over the years because of you. Without you, the Outer Loop and the Humanity Project are do nothing. And so I just want to thank you for that. And for everyone who's listening and watching to know that, that, you know, especially everyone in the U S like they only see me and they know me. So they think like me and Rachel, we're doing everything and we're, we're doing this much when we know you're doing this much. So, and then for people who are listening, I just made a gesture that's really small and then a gesture that's really big. Um, so thank you so much for everything you do and for having this conversation. It means a lot. So okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. So everyone uh, listening and watching, um, thanks for doing that. And also uh, you can uh, catch a new episode of the App Matters podcast every Thursday, wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, you can follow the Outer Loop and the Humanity Project on all of the Outer Loop social media platforms. You can also, and you should also, be following Supreme Tanzania Safaris on all of their social media platforms on Facebook and Instagram, and then also at supremetanzaniasafaris.com. Um, and the only tour company you should book with when you come to Tanzania is supreme tanzania safaris um and and do it book it now like book the safari now you need to if you're coming next summer book it now if you're coming in the fall book it now 
also, you know, feel free to get on a humanity project trip and then you can do both. You can do what the outer loop does and you can do what the Supreme Tanzania Safaris does, right? Um, so again, thanks everyone for listening and watching and we'll catch you next week. <laughs>